Hi guys, it's Connie Holland from Pixality Design, and today I wanted to show you a new feature that Squarespace has come out with pretty recently called promotional pop-ups. So you know what a pop-up is. You've seen them all over the internet. It's when you land on a website and a um, form pops up. It's usually asking for your email. Sometimes it's promoting something else. And it most of the time obscures the information on the website behind it until you either X out of it or you put in your email or you click a button or something. So Squarespace has now built that into the platform here so you can use those on your own website. And I'm going to today show you how to do that and give you some tips for how to do that so it's not super annoying for your clients and students. So if you, from the home menu on your website, if you go to settings, marketing, promotional pop-up, you'll see all the different options we have here. They've built in a lot of different choices here, which is really great. It gives you a lot of control over what this looks like, how it displays, and how often it displays, and things like that. So the first thing you want to do is choose a layout. So if you click here, you can see all the different layout options they give you. This one right here is just the default basic one. You can also choose one that you can upload a photo to. So those might be kind of cool if you're promoting something. There's also a few choices with a photo background. Um, and then there's down at the bottom, there's these two that have that obscure the entire page um, and basically look like a page overlaid on your page. But what I want to talk about is these two right here. Um, I like these the best because they're smaller. They don't um, cover the whole page. Um, they, they still move in and pop up, so they're going to catch people's attention. But then you're also not going to have to worry about them being super annoying, and um, Google's not going to penalize you on mobile for them um, either. So I like this one that's like a little corner slide one, and then this one slides in from the bottom. So I would take a look at those two. Um, but you can choose any any of these, and you have options of, of how you want them to, how uh, you know obscuring things you want them to be later on too. So choose your layout right there, and then you get to choose your action. So you have two choices here. First, you can do a sign up for a newsletter, and this looks pretty similar to a regular newsletter block on Squarespace. But you would just um, type in with the button stuff you want, and then you can connect it to your Mailchimp account or your Google Drive if you want it, um, those emails dumped someplace else into like a Google Sheet. You can also choose to click a button. And you might want to use this if you are sending somebody to a um, new sales page you have up, a new service that you're offering. Um, in this example, we are using it much like the announcement bar up top here, whereas they have open registrations for their summer football camps. So if we wanted to make sure people knew that that page was open, we could do a pop-up once they get on the site saying, um, hey, these are open, click here, and it'll take them to the page that they can actually register there. So that's pretty handy to you. So you can do up to two different links and click to um, the, the page or a file or an email or a phone number even, or even off-site. So you have a lot of different options about where that button can lead them and what they can do with that button. So you can get creative there. So that's your goal. So once you set up your goal and decide what you want the form to do, you would hit save there. Next is the content, and this is pretty self-explanatory. There's a headline and then a body um, text area on the form, so you would just type in there what you want that to be. Display and timing, there's a lot of options here, so let's take a look at them. So by default, the form is going to pop up automatically on the first page that a visitor comes to in your website. So a lot of times that's your home page, but they also might be clicking over to a specific blog post. So you can choose whether you want that pop-up to, to display on any first page. So what, no matter what the first page they come to, it's going to pop up there. Or you can choose only certain pages. And you can go down and actually choose the page. Okay, I want my home page. I want you know, it on this, this program page. I want it on our parties page. I want it on the shop page. Whatever. You can choose which pages you want. So that's kind of handy to have because you might not want, you know, if they're actually on your contact page or they're on a page where they can buy something from you, you probably don't want to be distracting them in that purchase process with a pop-up asking to sign up on your newsletter. So I would consider only having um, this pop-up displayed on pages where they're not doing some other pr higher priority thing that you would, um, you know, actually hiring you or paying you or doing something like that. So then timing, you have choices to show on a timer. So you can choose how many seconds you want. So this is set to after five seconds, and you can choose um, from a lot of different choices there. You can also choose to show on scroll, and I kind of like that one because that is going to then show once you're 25% down the page or 50% down or 75% down the page. 
You can also choose to show on timer and scroll where they have to be both five seconds after they've landed on the page and 25% down, something like that. So you can play around with that um, to make it not um, a general rule of thumb there is I would go after 10 seconds at a minimum um, just to let them actually see what your page is all about first before they get hit with this thing. So I would do either after 10 seconds or 50% down the page maybe before it, um, it pops up into them um, just to not be so obnoxious. And then frequency is another thing where you can control kind of how obnoxious it is. So if they X out of it, the, it will show, you can choose when it shows it to them the next time. So you can do it the next day if you want or in one week. I like one week. I think if they're still coming back to your website a week later, they're still very interested, um, but they might um, not, they might be ready to just sign up for a newsletter or something. But you can choose two weeks or 30 days um, or never again also. So they give you a lot of choices here and it really is situation dependent. You need to know what you're asking them to do with that pop-up, who your clients are, what they're going to be turned off by, what's going to be they're going to think is helpful that you reminded them about it. So just really think of the situation, think about how you feel about pop-ups, and you can adjust things um, accordingly, either how much of the screen it displays or how often it comes up or um, that sort of thing. And then if you've got a lot of changes here and you just want to go back to defaults, you can hit that reset button. So once you have the timing and display in, um, oh, one more thing, you can choose down here on frequency. You can choose, if, the, if it's a newsletter sign up, you probably want to check this one that says don't show again after newsletter sign up. As long as you're still asking for a newsletter sign up, you don't wanna keep showing it to them once they've already signed up. So that's handy. And then um, show on mobile. So if you chose one of those forms, like this one that does kind of obscure most of the page, you'll wanna uncheck show on mobile. So it doesn't show on mobile if search engine optimization is something that's important for your business. If you want to show up in the search results like Google, then you don't want to have a pop-up form on mobile only that obscures most of the page. If you have one of those more, um, those smaller ones, then it's fine to leave that checked for show on mobile because Google just doesn't like the, on mobile, they are trying to discourage pop-ups that cover the whole screen on mobile. So that's why they gave you that option there. So if you don't even want to mess with it, just unclick show on mobile. It won't show on mobile. You won't have to worry about it. But I think you're probably just fine if you use one of those smaller ones and you want to continue to show it on mobile. Okay, and then the last choice you have is style. And this is going to look like your normal style editor. All the colors and um, font choices here they just apply to the pop-up form though. They don't apply to the rest of your site. So you can style it to match your site, you know, copy and paste your colors over, get the fonts right. Um, you can change some of the animations on it, um, play around with the way you have it look there on the style. And so that is all there is to it. Once you have it set up, you've got the action, the content, the display and the timing, how it's gonna behave and the way it looks done. Then all you do up here is you click on and hit save and then it is a part of your website. And for somebody who um, is coming new to your website, depending on the behaviors you set on the form, they will see that form pop up. Um, so just a, a word of note there, if you have checked it once on your own website and you have, you know, say it's set to not show again for seven days, you're not gonna see it. So just as soon as you hit save and you go try and look at it on your website, it's not gonna come up for you because it already knows that you saw it and you X'd out of it. So you can um, you know, check on a different browser window. You can open an incognito window in Chrome. That's an option there. So then it doesn't think you're the same person if you wanna check it there. Um, or you can just have a friend check it and see what they think and give you some feedback on it also. Um, but I hope that helps. I hope that gives you an idea about all the different choices you have for using those promotional pop-ups. They are a very great tool for getting information, timely information in front of your website vid visitors or um, reminding them that they might want to sign up for your newsletter without having it kind of junking up your page. Um, but use, use promotional pop-ups with caution. Um, back off um, a little more than maybe you think you should just so you're not um, annoying or frustrating your website vi visitors too. They need to see your website, they need to see what you're about before you hit them with your latest promotion also. So I hope that helps and go out and uh, put some promotional pop-ups up on your site. Um, let me know how that goes for you and if you have any questions, I will also link to below this video the Squarespace um, tutorial 
article that they wrote on it too, which has some frequently asked questions. Um, if you get stuck or can't figure out what it can and it can't do. Um, the one thing I will say it can't do that I wish it did was have an exit intent. So if you've been on a website before doing some stuff, no pop-up, no pop-up, when you go to leave, it knows when your, your mouse moves up to hit like the back, back button on your browser. Then that's when it will display the promotional pop-up. Um, that is not a function that's available in this version that Squarespace has put out. Um, if you really, really want that function, I recommend Seth's pop-up creator. And I have another tutorial video on that. Um, and that is an option with um, the Seth's uh, plugin. It costs like, I think, 16 or $17 one time. But other than that, um, I can't see any other features that's missing in what Squarespace built here. It seems like a really great option, really well designed, and just a really clean, clean look um, that you can incorporate into your site. So good luck with that. I will talk to you later.